So this video is going to be some last minute tips for GCC Biology Paper 2. So you've already done the first paper quite a while back now. This video is going to be focused on the topics that come up in the second paper. I'm just going to focus more on telling you guys exactly what things to look out for within this paper because a lot of the things I've already said in my first paper video, so this video is not going to be too long. Just some last minute things to refresh yourself before you go into the exam. So let's just get on with it. Okay, now the first thing... Oh, I look really bright. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that should be all right. So what are the topics in this paper? So you've got your homeostasis topic, a very, very big, chunky topic that's got lots of different things within it. You've got your variation, your evolution topic, and you've got your ecology as well. And of course, on top of that, you have your required practicals for this paper. The good thing about biology is that paper one and paper two, the topics are separate. So the things you learned for paper one, you're not going to really need for this paper. Now, the first thing, as I say with every single science, is to go to the specification and look at the topic list. I go through every single one and make sure you know it very well. If you don't know what something means, find a YouTube video where they explain it and they tell you based on the specification what you need to know from it and then you just continue going with every single one of the topics. No matter how confident you feel with this exam, you wanna make sure you go over every single topic one last time and just quickly get a refresh. So that's what I'm gonna do with you guys right now. I'm gonna just go through every topic and look at every single thing that can come up and I'll tell you a few things from my own experience that are more likely to come up than others. Obviously, this isn't a prediction video. This is more things to prioritize especially if you only have like a couple of hours before your exam at this point. Now I am going to link some checklists and things down below in the description. Make sure that on top of these checklists and things that you look at if you have time please focus on as many exam questions as possible because that is genuinely the best way you can improve in the short amount of time. Obviously if you don't know the content exam questions isn't going to be that useful. Focus more on learning the content but then if you are confident with the content itself just spam questions. You don't have to do full pass papers. Instead just look at each topic one by one and do questions for them until you feel confident in it. Okay so I've got the 8QA biology paper 2 checklist here. Obviously I'm not going to go through every single topic in absolute detail. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of everything and just things that you might want to focus more on. So let's start off with the first topic which is your homeostasis and response topic. The thing that usually repeats a lot within this topic is the idea of negative feedback. This is something you should be familiar with if you aren't, something you should definitely go over. Uh, it's the aspect of when something goes low in your body or when something goes too high, the body has a way to bring it back to its normal level. So the common example is to do with blood glucose. So there's a common question where you get asked about insulin and glucagon and how they balance glucose levels. So remember, if you have a meal, you're gonna increase that glucose level. You can't have too much glucose in the blood. So what you have is a hormone called insulin, which you are probably aware of, which brings that glucose level back down. And obviously if the glucose level gets too low, there's a negative feedback for that one as well. It's the effect of glucagon, which brings it back up. And remember that when it goes back to its normal level, that's when that hormone stops being secreted because you have completed negative feedback. That's usually a marking point with these type of questions as well. So just be really clear with the whole idea of negative feedback throughout this topic. So even if it's not blood glucose level, talking about body temperature, that's another common thing that comes up usually as well. The same negative feedback mechanism that happens. Just looking through the specification right now, there's a tab here talking about the reflex arc. This is a fairly common question. I've seen it quite a bit. It's just simple listing the steps. How do you get from the change in the environment all the way to the response at the end? Basically just looking at what nerves do which things within the body as it goes from the stimulus all the way to the effector and then you get that response taking place. And this is where the first required practical comes in as well. So this is the one where you drop a ruler and you try and like grab it so it's based on reaction time. Sometimes they vary this practical and they use other methods. So I think I've seen in a previous question, one where instead of a ruler being dropped, they had someone on a computer screen trying to click a button as quickly as they could based on the reaction time. But this question comes up in a variety of different ways, but make sure you know the common marking points. The questions that they usually give for these are quite similar. So try and look for some questions involving this practical and, and with all the other practicals and see what kind of questions they ask because even though the practical themselves might be a little bit changed, it might be a bit different. The questions that they usually ask are the same or very, very similar. So if you know the questions, you're more likely to obviously get the answer right. I'm just looking through the rest of the specification. I have obviously 
obviously not gone over every single little thing. That's what I want you to do when you click the link down below and look at everything yourself. I'm just pointing at some of the more common things here. So another really common area is to do with the nephrons, so the kidneys. Talking about ADH, for example, very, very common question for higher students. Just the whole idea of urine production, how ADH controls that water reabsorption, all of that stuff. And there's some stuff here to the menstrual cycle. I have seen a lot of graphs involving this where they point at a certain area within the cycle and they just ask you to name what hormone might be influencing this or stuff like that. I would also recommend to dedicate some time towards this as well because that comes up quite a bit. And then we're coming to our next required practical. So this is the seedling practical. This is the one where you grow some seeds. This is to do with phototropism, gravitropism and auxin. This, even though it's a really small area within the topic, it's a lot of marks a lot of the time and I always see questions to do with this so I would definitely recommend for you to look at this required practical and to just generally look at the role of auxin within plant growth and how all of that works. Okay moving on to the next topic here the inheritance topic this one has a lot of definitions that you just need to know you've got sexual asexual reproduction you've got meiosis you've got fertilization it's all stuff that you just memorize and you just watch a YouTube video and they tell you what to do and you just memorize it. The genome that's a very common definition that they ask about or what a gene is that's that's very common as well. Gamete, chromosome, allele, genotype, phenotype, dominant, recessive, homozygous, heterozygous. And the last couple that I mentioned link to Punnett squares is where you're trying to look at different characteristics and try and like connect the things uh, and try and look at different probabilities. Also very, very common question type. So definitely look at this as well. Okay, so let's continue with the evolution. By the way, I'm filming this section on the day of Eid, which is why I'm wearing what I'm wearing even on Eid. I still have some videos to make and I'm not gonna let you guys down. So that's why I haven't changed. That's the only reason I look a little overdressed for this, but that's okay. So what I wanted to say about evolution here, one thing that you need to get into your head is the steps of evolution, the natural selection. So you start off with random mutations in the population. And obviously these mutations are going to lead to new genes. Most of them are probably going to be non-functional but you are going to have changes in genes which might allow for a beneficial trait against the selection pressures that the population might be against. So for example, if you live in a hot climate and you get a mutation that helps you retain water, that's going to obviously be beneficial. The selection pressure here is the hot environment. So these organisms with these beneficial genes, they're more likely to survive. That's always a marking point and therefore that means they're more likely to produce offspring. That's something you also have to say. And now if they're producing offspring, they pass down their alleles to their offspring. So they're also going to get these beneficial mutations and over time, the proportion of the population with this mutation increases. That's the whole idea of evolution and natural selection. That's what you'd say if it just asks you to describe all of it. And I'm looking here, there's some other things around the whole idea of evolution and things as well here. Stuff to do with genetic engineering and selective breeding. You don't get many questions on them and if you do, they're not very heavy. Genetic engineering though could perhaps be a longer question where they ask you to evaluate things but it's not that common you don't really get much of it and then you have some stuff to do with like evolutionary trees that's all quite common sense if you've gone over classification all that stuff it should be fine and then I think the last topic we have here is ecology a lot of this is basically like geography so there's some definitions in this one that you need to know as well so uh, for example things to do with what an ecosystem actually is what interdependence means stable community the difference between community population uh, environment abiotic biotic factors is all of these things just really common definition questions that they can come up with and also you sometimes get questions on extremophiles I've seen that quite a bit food chains a lot of the time they give a maths question based on food chains and like to do with the energy and things that are being transferred across the food chain so watch out for that and there's a required practical here that is to do with the quadrats so this is one that I really recommend for you to properly learn and understand because I don't know why they just like to put this one in all the time so go over this one and if you do biology triple there's another required practical this one's to do with decay of fresh milk and pH change. I can't lie, this is a really strange practical and it's not one that comes up often, but I mean, it's obviously important to look at all these required practicals, but I'm just saying it's not as common as some other ones. And then lastly, you have stuff to do with biodiversity. Biodiversity is very much like common sense, as in a lot of the things here you probably know already, like what's the bad things about deforestation, the stuff to do with like waste production, human population, it's very much things that you can probably come up with on the spot. But I do want you to just quickly have a brief look at this topic as well because they do like to ask questions about it even though their mark schemes for them are quite straightforward. So that is quite a brief overview of everything in this paper. Hopefully I've given you a bit of guidance to understand where you should put your priorities towards and where you should revise a bit more. Obviously I'm not saying only revise those things, I'm just saying from what I've seen in 
previous papers, that's what usually comes up. So if you are low on time, that's what I would recommend for you to do. So my last words of advice is to go over those required practicals because I don't know why people don't do that. It's a really important aspect of the paper, but also to make sure that every single topic is as good as can be. Try and focus on the bigger ones, the ones that are more likely to come up. And apart from that, I just wanna say good luck. After this, we're gonna be done with biology, so that's good. And remember that this exam season is pretty much almost done. I mean, we do still have a couple more exams, but we've gotten through the halfway point. We're basically nearly there now. So good luck again, and I'll see you very soon.